We are going to have a conversation around the finance bill from the political side. Um, the Kenya Coins administration is now getting preparing to have its second budget. And we have seen how much they want to spend, how much they, um, what are the priority areas, and where they want to le get the money from. We're joined by two gentlemen in the studio. Maliba Arnold is a strategic communications advisor at the UDA, the ruling party. Good morning. Good morning, Eric. I like your tie. Uh, thank you. That's on brand. I'm not sure. I just checked in the wardrobe and picked this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he just came in it. Yeah. But I noticed there's a mere blue as well, the shirt and the, and the suit. Well, there's, there's no as me blue. Uh, okay. Akuna? No, the Azimio blue is not anything close to this. It's not. Yeah. Frederick Okango is the Secretary of Political Affairs in Azimio. He is in blue. Is that Azimio blue? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> is it any? He is uh, denying that um, to this morning he has a mix of colors. Mm. But uh, uh, that's the story for another day. The yellow is fading anyway. What? It's fading. <laughs> Well, you've said it early. That is a very lovely tie. It's a beautiful tie. I I'm not sure it's beautiful. People who don't put on, put on right, ties. <laughs> you know, the studio is full of men, mm. so you expect them to get colors wrong. <laughs> uh, I know our viewers and listeners out there will actually understand <laughs> why we are lost. This is a very foreign territory to us. Are you saying this, yeah, because, this uh, microphone is not, is not, is not yellow? Pink. City, <laughs> <Yes. laughs> as we welcome the gentleman, remind us the message by the Kenya Revenue Authority on e-teams, electronic tax invoice management system. system. Uh -huh. Well, not everybody mm. is VAT compliant, but that shouldn't be an issue. What KRA seeks to do is to ensure that every citizen who is involved in one business or the other has a way of ensuring that they are compliant. Now, all you require is to perform a very simple task. Go to your phone, star 222 as in triple two hash. Once you do that, you will enter a new world of KRA. And indeed, you'll find an array of choices. KRA, Bonyeza. When you Bonyeza, there will be details that you will be required to fill in. Now, among these details, maybe something you don't have, it will be the probably the PIN number of the person you seek to send an invoice to. Mm. But if you have it, all you do is enter the PIN number. That's it. And so then you're done. simple as that. And then you're done. That's as simple okay. as that. Yes. Just see how Kenya Kwanza has actually made tax returns easy. Uh, that's just how. Uh, effective this administration is M maybe how they have uh, made it easy to get your money <laughs> it's actually so easy to get your money yes very good. and they get your money yeah. that's very good yeah. Thank you. Efficiency. you see, actually, mm. in tax collection, one mm. of those things you need to do is to ensure that taxes are easy to collect. Mm. Uh, whereas this is just to ensure that you are compliant. Uh, Okango is actually uh, afraid that they will get his money. Actually, taxes have to be Arnold paid. here was actually agreeing with you. I don't know why you decided to lose this gain. I kept quiet because no, he wasn't. you had somebody who was actually agreeing with you. Okango wasn't. Yes, he was. He is not in the business of agreeing with me. <laughs> the only reason Even why he does, you don't see <laughs> I, It sounds to me more like you are in the business of always differing for, uh, with him. <laughs> <laughs> why do I feel like money has been poured here? <laughs> money has been collected. City. Yes. From the tax. <laughs> this day, uh, this week, the proverbs will be from Liberia. Uh, yes, these proverbs are from the country of Liberia, the oldest independent country on the continent of mm. Africa. Mm -hmm. mm. They got independence 100 years before the others were still scrambling and trying to figure out mm. whether they should have independence or not. Mm. It is better to fall while sitting than to fall while standing. It's better to fall while sitting than to fall while standing. Yes. What do you read from this, Arnold? Uh, <clears throat> probably if you're sitting means you're closer to the ground mm. <clears throat> uh, means if you fall the distance you know <clears throat> we went to school when GHC was still a subject so <clears throat> there used to be that uh, brother. Uh, the higher you go 
the cooler it becomes yep. but then because we are young and cheeky we used to say the higher you go uh, the heavier you fall mm. so uh, closer to that i will say that if you're seated the distance between you and the ground will be shorter mm-hmm. as such the injury might not be so big mm-hmm. Uh, but then if you are standing it means that the third will be big mm. the fall will have a serious third mm. and uh, of course probably the injury will be much higher mm. so i'm thinking that uh, uh, if you go down yep. when you are not so much elevated yep. uh, the injury the harm effect is not as much okay I know. that's when, the direct translation of yeah. it what's the interpretation what do you think the liberians are saying probably it speaks to humility <coughs> mm that uh them that are humble um, don't suffer so much harm mm. uh, in case uh, fortunes change mm. but those that are proud of course have got some serious beating to receive mm. uh when things don't go right okay yeah fred what's yours i think i'll, I'll give it a political interpretation mm. you know they always say that when you're standing mm. you're actually actively involved that's why they say you stand tall mm. but imagine when you are sitting it means there's nothing you are doing mm. so when they say the liberians say it's better to fall when sitting when when standing mm. it means that when you are not doing anything useful to the people or to yourself then you can actually fall and no one will notice but when you are actively involved in giving services to the people offering them the services and you fall it will be unfortunate because people will be asking what made him or her fall mm. that's my interpretation that is mandamano interpretation <laughs> <laughs> it works yes it does, <laughs> it does and work. mandamano is coming by the way. <laughs> it does work all right so let's get into this conversation the finance bill has been published so let's just begin so the budget <coughs> policy statement was presented to parliament it was interrogated and what the the government w- intends to do in the next financial year mm-hmm. the uh, budget committee looked at it they discussed it as, as a parliament looked at the performance of the last budget and then said okay um the main areas that you want to focus on all right go ahead we agree but then the issue was uh, how much are you going to spend was it 4.2 trillion shilling or was it 3.9 trillion shillings uh government then settles on 3.9 trillion now what we're discussing is the finance bill how do you intend to raise the 3.9 trillion shillings and that's where the issue then comes out and we've seen some reactions as is expected at this point when people now start interrogating the content of the finance bill and the various sectors start looking at what uh, is going to impact them in the finance bill and they we are feeling a lot of you know conversations that is heading towards the uh, the angle of heat more than people clapping on the finance bill and all of course you've seen this what your immediate <coughs> reaction when you see the kind of feedback that uh, coming off conversations around the finance bill first of all i would love to loud the process that is ongoing that is an article 10 process and uh, rather than lament and try to characterize it uh, by picking what i would call uh, linear uh, uh, positions this is a very important process that is ongoing when you hear uh, the loud noises when you hear the contributions that come into this it means that we are alive to the constitutional uh, provisions in article 10 this is pub- public participation and uh, public participation the constitution never said that it was going to be harmonious he never said that it was going to be uh, a symphony where <coughs> all of us sing in uh, well coordinated voices uh, public participation was always going to be noisy so this for me means that uh, we are healthy as a republic uh, the constitution is well and live and that we as a people are also living to that particular spirit uh, partly of course i will also point out that uh, in the process of uh, having this particular conversation we continuously might be losing the whole essence of public participation because it's much easier uh, to uh, pick uh, sloganeering uh, people furthering ends other than public participation that gives depth to this remember like you said this is a proposal uh, this document has not been in parliament once or twice it's been there i think thrice uh, parliament has got one of the most competent uh, uh, technical unit when it comes to this issue it's called the parliamentary budget office uh, with 
top level economists and people who really know how these things are working out uh, so when you see parliamentarians uh, especially those opposed to it show up and uh, they sound like they are clueless uh, it really worries those of us who actually feel that uh, parliament for me is the supreme organ of the country mm. and that when you see parliament seated you see the whole country gathered that is the national delegates conference of this particular country so i'm thinking that the pbo uh, unfortunately, now P when you speak about PBO, there are uh, two PBOs now mm -hmm. because there's mm -hmm. the Public Benefits uh, Organizations. Organizations Act now that has actually become effective, replacing the NGO Coordination Act. But then the longest PBO we've known is the Parliamentary uh, Budget Office. So I love the process that is ongoing. I wish that we direct the energies, the thoughts, the ideas and everything. And by the way, we should not even begrudge those that can actually pick this particular process for whatever reason, mm. because that is public participation. It is their right. Uh, somewhere in the Bible, uh, I think it's Paul who says that whether it's out of strife or competition, uh, so long as Christ is preached, that is fine. So uh, if other people uh, out can actually pick this particular process and do things other than serious public participation that enriches the process, then again, we shouldn't be, uh, begrudge them because it's their right. But we can okay. point that out. Okay. Yeah. Fred, you can't really argue with what you said. I mean, this is public participation. It's expected. It's going. It's it's uh, demonstrating that we are actually a maturing democracy mm -hmm. where we are all as citizens engaged. Mm -hmm. Eric and City, we live in this country and uh, you know, when uh, the budget policy statements came out, we forewarned Kenyans and we went through it and we saw where they were going to get this money. They were actually going to tax Kenyans. There was nowhere else, but not just tax, over tax. President Ruto recently announced to the people of Kenya that he would wish to tax Kenyans more, the ratio of the tax to the GDP, he claims, I'm not sure if his research is right or wrong, but he claims that compared to our peers in the continent, we are taxed at 14%. And by the time he leaves office in 2027, you'd want to see it at 22%. Now, when you go back to that budget policy statement, it outlines everything that they needed but come to the finance bill 2022 2024 ct mm. that bill has proposed remember, proposed mm. a number of areas that they would want to tax to get the money the trillions that you're talking about mm. interestingly they are going to get this money from the people and all talks of public participation as a constitutional provision, not only in Article 10, but also in Article 201, and it's a continuous theme in the Constitution of Kenya. Let me tell you, Eric and City, the last finance bill, which is now an act, 2023, you know that they said this is a proposal, and they went to the people, and they got the views of the people. Never mind they never factored in any, and I'll give you the most conspicuous one. No one in the public participation said, we want housing levy 1.5%. No one said that, remove the taxation from on fuel 8% to 16%. But it is there today. What I'm trying to say is, in public participation, it is a principle. It is a constitutional principle that the views of the public must be factored in the final decision making. Factored in. And that is why uh. when the parliament is facilitated through Article 118 to conduct public participation after the views have been given by the stakeholders, now they take to the public and say, listen, this is what is being proposed. What do you think? Mm. Today, we are confident that the people of Kenya have read the document or they continue to read. And Kenyans have been very patient. They were told you tighten your belts. They have tightened their belts. But I think the belt is cut. They don't have a belt anymore. So when Arnold and Tim tells us that this is a continuous process, you know, it's just a proposal. I saw the other day the chair finance committee, my good friend, uh, from Molo, Kimani, mm. was cornered even in church. 
Kenyans are now following them even in church. In funerals, you start speaking about budget, they tell you, Towa e, Towa e, Towa e. Well, that is public participation. That is public participation. I am talking about public participation. Yeah. And why I'm talking about public participation mm. is the people are telling them that this is what we don't want, this is what we want. So we are waiting for them. And I'm giving you an example. In, 20, in, in, the, in, the, in the current act, there are so many things that the public told them to remove. And they never removed. They came back with changes, to be you know, fair. No, 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 no. Eric, Fred, you cannot Fred, say they came back with changes. The finance what bill. Are the most the significant, finance, what are the most significant so ones so that are say. affecting the payslip of so a civil let me servant? Say, so let me say. No, I'm asking you. Uh, so let me say. No, so go will, ahead. You know, will you now let me respond yeah, to go you? Go ahead. The initial proposal for fine, for housing levy was 3%. three percent. Mm. Came down to 1.5% okay. after public participation. Who told them that we want 1.5? Yes, because you didn't want... No, no, I'm just asking. Okay. It was factored in. You're talking about... Uh, the views are there of the views, public Eric, in. Eric, are there views of the public Eric. that suggested that we want 1.5% from the employer, 1.5% from the employee? And are there views that said we want 1.5% from those who in formal uh, sector? None. How do you None. know this? How do you I know, know this? because uh, I was following this keenly. No. I read the following, submissions. Following I keenly is one issue. Just do you have records that I do have show records. this is yes, what I do. all the stakeholders presented? Eric. Do you have records that Eric. show this is what the finance committee considered? Let me tell you. Do you have records that show that? Do Let, not give okay. us hearsay, Fred. Okay. This is not a platform okay. for hearsay. This is not a platform for hearsay, uh, but I'll tell you the truth. The truth of the matter is mm. what is the truth? When when the committee came before the public, mm. they told us the number of submissions they got from the public. It was live on TVs. We watch TV. Do you have it analysis? was on newspapers. Do you have and analysis they to the same? said that the views they received were overwhelming. You only needed a smart person to go to the bill that was proposed and look if there is any of the views that the public mentioned captured none and i can tell you when president ruto was pushing for the housing levy despite the courts declaring it unconstitutional what that tells you was is, it the tax unconstitutional or the process uh, that ended up doing the same eric uh, anyway but uh, no, let, let, let me finish no, no, let, really, let, you've really taken a lot of time let yeah. me just help you a little bit no you can't yeah. help number me one, because you are helping number one, yourself number as a one, government number one mm. eric okango is a lawyer uh, i'm also going to school for law uh, to, to top up the public policy and administration that i've done and i know that lawyers are very bad mathematicians so when he sits here and of late i've also realized that journalism even though that is the core business that i started with life with uh, has got a problem with math even though we have got data journalism now coming up <coughs> as a serious component you know when the president speaks about uh, we are taxed lesser we're talking about tax to gdp <coughs> somebody like okango rushes and talks about that being increasing tax you know, when you talk about tax to GDP, it does not necessarily mean that it will translate. The president here was talking about effectively collecting our taxes so that when you compare to GDP, <coughs> as in the president is a smart human being, he would actually have said that if you look at our pay slips, this is what comes out of it. He spoke about <coughs> GDP. He was talking about effective collection. That you can widen the net not necessarily deepening the collection. I needed to point that out. But <coughs> be that as it is, when you listen to Okango, you feel like this is a Matthew 2.18 moment. Every time Okango opens up his mouth, you feel that that is Rachel lamenting. Her voice was heard in drama. <coughs> that the only thing that can come out of uh, Azimio and where Okango comes from is lamentations and crying and gnashing of teeth. A nation cannot be run through such like thinking. Because when you listen to him again, very quickly, Okango rushes out and he's pointing out about the views of the people and everything else. When we go to elections, what are we doing? We are electing our leaders. What do leaders do? They lead the pack. And Okango knows what the policy cycle looks like. There's something called agenda setting that is normally number one. Whether you look at it from the seven stage way of making policy or you just reduce it to three and you do the three P's of policy, you have got a problem. You have got the politics around every problem, and then you have got a program that solves that. You realize that the problem is simply data. That is where agenda, uh, agenda setting is done and everything else. So to Okango is that if, the, the, you know, the, this thing he calls the people, that if the people did not want it, 
the leaders do not see what is good for the country. Why do we elect leaders if they do not help? Why do we have a government that does not know where we are going? And then the constitution opens a room for us to participate and better the process. So it cannot be that w the word overwhelming, and lawyers are so good with words, I wonder why Okango will use the word overwhelming uh, to, qu to qualify the issue that people did not want it. People had issues, number one, with the percentage that was reduced the courts had a problem with the process that was addressed so you can't go around and say that the people do not want if you were to give people the opportunity to decide whether they want to be taxed or not i can tell you <laughs> i work for the party i wouldn't want my money to be taxed if i if i were to be given a chance to but that is not how countries are run so from where we sit can we allow proper public participation rather than sloganeering, uh, pursuing other narrow ends? Otherwise, you know, we will you, not go so far okay. for the simple reason that people pick up issues and skew them. Like you picked up the issue on bread, you are running with it. You're talking about uh, housing levy, you pick the extreme point and run with it. How then do Is you... Is that make... illegitimate? Well, Is it wrong like, to like I said, run with it? Whereas, whereas I do not agree <coughs> with that way of doing public participation, but it's enshrined in the constitution, we can allow them to go that <coughs> way. But then we have to say that that is actually killing the depth and the range of public participation. I so it, that it then it helps a, the it process. It was actually enhancing the depth of public participation. Not when people pick uh, narrow ends. When people pick... Who decides that these issues are narrow? I, I, would, I, I would decide, for example, like for yes. example... What was the purpose of public participation in the Constitution? It was for purposes of enriching the process of governance, as right? De as determined but by... But then, by we, the people of Kenya, you look at the preamble. We, the people of Kenya. So, <laughs> and, uh, so when people pick narrow and linear approaches you, you to this know, particular you know process, Eric, they huh? kill the spirit of public participation. What's narrow? Uh, what is narrow yes, is give that an example. when you wake up in the morning, hmm. Okango is here, he runs out and tells you, that uh, who told this government that we wanted this particular part of it? He, he, he has got the constitutional right to ask whatever question he is doing. But then does that <coughs> add value, especially when he's using half truth, when he's coming in to spin, when he comes in to lie? You've asked him, for example, does he have the data? No. Does he have the analysis? No. But he's talking about the truth. We can go back to the old that. question by uh, Pilot. What is truth, uh, uh, according uh, to Kango? And when he speaks about the people, who are these people? Somehow... Uh, the people in Azmio think that the people are only their voice. It's true. Okay. And what they okay. say but and do to this helps <laughs> governance. I know, I know, I know, you know the interesting thing about this discussion? Even as you are making the point you're making very eloquently, you may not see it, but you're actually supporting what he is saying. No, no, city. Because you're, no, allow you me know. to say what I want to say. Because mm. when you make a presentation and you point to things, you haven't provided us with any data. I was going to that. No, no, no. I was checking what he, he said. He could argue that he himself had not been given time to present the data. So, the two of you are more or less speaking from the same end. You, 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 <laughs> See, I was checking you, you, Okango, you, 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 yes. his excesses, and uh, then the we, conversation is actually going but into you a place where you countered it with words as well. Yes, yes. exactly. If, if you are countering it with saying Okango has said this, but this is the true position. Okango said this, this is the true position. Let, let, then you would be let, countering. Let me, let me countering with you. many words let and quoting you. Matthew what? Matthew 1, 2, 8? 2, 18. Matthew 2, 18. City, 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 <laughs> and <laughs> city and We are taking a break. Hold on, Fred. We are taking a break. It's 29 minutes to 8. We're having a finance bill conversation. So there is a political standoff on the issue of the finance bill. We have Fred Okango, who is the Secretary of Political Affairs in Azimio, and Arnold Maliba, who is a Strategic Communications Advisor at UDA, as our guest in the studio. We'll be back shortly. Don't go away. Conversation continues. From the Azimio corner, we have Fred Okango, who is the Secretary of Political Affairs, and from UDA, the ruling coalition, Maliba Arnold is a Strategic Communications Advisor. Gentlemen, we are discussing the finance bill. The two sides of the same coin that we are looking at politically. So the finance bill has been published and we're getting feedback from various sectors. There are those in the manufacturing who are saying, okay, we've got an issue with this, this and the other on excise duty and such. We've got uh, manufacturers who are saying something. We have uh, people in the, in the breweries who are saying something. There are people who are talking about bread uh, being taxed. There are people in agriculture who are saying, okay, so where are we heading in this direction? All this feedback like Arnold and in fact, even you, Fred, you agreed. All this is public participation. Now, how should this conversation move 
towards then make, ensuring that the views of the public, which is an issue that you have, that the views of the public are incorporated in the final bill that is discussed in Parliament. You, you know, Eric, eh? I wanted to say that uh, earlier on, as it is today, we don't have a national legislation on public participation. The threshold. But courts have pronounced themselves on this issue. It must be sufficient enough. Now, I know Kenyans are unhappy because they have said so, particularly on the issues of, uh, 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 what do you call it, 16% uh, uh, VAT on bread. I know Kenyans are unhappy on the issue of circulation, motor vehicle, motor vehicle circulation tax of 1 to 2.5 percent. Kenyans are happy on the 20 percent that is being proposed on uh, the income from uh, digital market, uh, digital market uh, and, and social media and the rest. Kenyans are happy about that. But you know, the best way to address this issue is to do adequate public participation. And that can only Define be reflected. It. Adequate public participation is participation by the people where their views actually find their way in the decision making and then and how in do the you decision making mm -hmm. just give me time eric decision making is may it happens in parliament so when you have a bill like finance bill 2024 that has come with a lot of proposals that look punitive so for you to believe that actually your view made it to the uh, final decision making is when the enactment is done now, when the Finance Act 2024 comes out and you see that I proposed as a person or an ordinary Kenyan that instead of taxing Kenyans 2.5 on the motor vehicle, we proposed one and it is there, then you can actually see that. Okay. okay? Answer my question. I want to pause you. My question was, how, what's the best way from Azimio that this public views can be taken, be synthesized and be incorporated in the final bill? In such a way that Fred Okango, ordinary Monanji, not as a mere top leader, can feel that I participated and then my views went there and this is how my view was taken. Either it was taken directly or it was not considered at all and I can see why. Very fast. Look at the publication period. These are people who are saying that <coughs> we have up to 28th of this month to give views written. Then they'll invite the public for oral submissions. It means when you shorten that period again, you are locking out potential amendments because you know you don't want them. Number two, segregate the participation into details. We are publishing this in the newspapers and inviting the public to come and send their views. While my grandmother in the village who do not read the newspaper did not see it. Take the participation to the core of the Mwana Inchi, down, and translate everything into a language that everyone can understand. Number two, there are issues of young people in that bill that is affecting them, particularly on the issues of monetization of the digital market. Is there a formula they have used to reach the young people? No. So what I'm saying is the public participation is good. It is good that today people are interacting with the bill. They are speaking about it. They are rejecting it pronto. But for their views to be factored in, they must be given also more time to interact with the bill. How many pages is the bill? How many pages is it? It's well, a large document. So what we are saying is, for us in Azimio, we, don't, we, don't, we will pay taxes. Because we say, kulipo ushuru ni kujitegemea. But we don't want to see a situation where hmm. Kenyans are overtaxed. So what are Our you saying? Members of parliament, is Azimio saying that they'd like the publication period extended i am saying so from, i am saying so. what to what i am saying so because the, the the period is very short from what to what give them two weeks give them two weeks give them two weeks what are the factors to consider here factors to consider are this is a debate that will not uh, i mean i mean this, this is an issue of concern to the people okay it's an issue of concern to the people because the taxation <coughs> is about representation too the taxation is about expenditure too. Where do you get the money? You get the money from the same people. I cannot come to your house and tell you, mm. uh, Eric, now I want to help you build a better house, but I'm not telling you how you are going to build it. You know? Okay. I'm not telling you how we're going to build it. There's a cut off date. There's a cut off the date. budget. There's a cut off date of the budget. So working but backwards, also, how much if time you, work you want? Backwards, when does the budget 
cycle starts. It didn't start yesterday. It didn't start yesterday. So even as we do that, what I'm trying to say, Eric, is let's find a way mm. of ensuring that mm. we get as many views as possible from the people. Okay. After getting that, let's also find a way of ensuring that those views are factored in. Because you see, it is one thing Point to made. do public participation. Point made. Let it me is one thing to do public allow me to participation. Cut you off there, Fred. Allow me. Allow me. Arnold, come in. I first of all my question again. Yeah is how do we ensure that the current process where the citizens are engaging in one way or the other with the finance bill, first of all, they have better information on the finance bill, proper details of it, and then those considerations are then factored into the final bill that's discussed in Parliament. Uh, well, first of all, I think I would agree with Okango that uh, the way we allow people to ventilate on this particular document which is actually very complex is a little bit in my opinion not sufficient in two ways uh, that number one uh, we have got a budget cycle it's not an event budget making is a process it's actually five year we have got the mtf process and then we've got of course the annual uh, budgeting cycle so ordinarily it begins around september and then runs all the way again to september but be that as it may i think that these things are legislated not that i think i know that the, le the budgeting cycle is legislated uh, what we are doing now is not new there is no difference between this year and how it has happened in the last 10 years. That is how we gave ourselves that particular process. The only, what I would say is that the gaps that exist, uh, there is an opportunity for us to improve that so that the people in Treasury uh, provide us with a popular version. When we are doing uh, consequential uh, processes, remember like when we were doing the constitution, we had a popular version. Mm. There is need to have popular versions of these particular things because some of them, you know, we are looking at 136 pages of a bill. But that is not the whole thing. The attendant pages are actually almost 5,000 because you're going to have other uh, laws that are attendant to it. Like, for example, you have got the income tax, all those other acts that do exist. So the 136 pages is just the, what I would call uh, the introductory part of it. So I think in future, and this is for parliament to do, as an institution, uh, the uh, parliamentary budget office, they need to find ways of actually ensuring that uh, policy communication is made as easy as possible for purposes of people ventilating into it. Otherwise, then they run away with quick lines that a few politicians who don't read these things uh, run with it, go to it in, uh, in fin rolls, and then some of us also come here and we've not read the whole thing. We've not really done justice to the document. So mm. I'm thinking that going forward, this one is a challenge to us as a nation, both people at the National Treasury and the people in Parliament to make policy uh, communication a little bit better for the people we have so that they ventilate on it. Otherwise, even as we sit here, not so many of us will actually be looking at the substance of the bill other than what has been reported or the pickup lines that people are running with. But then, as it is today, we have got what I would call sufficient time in the way we have been doing things. The emails are actually open, people are putting in, and we have got parliamentarians and uh, MCAs and elected leaders whom we send. When they come to funerals and they say, they ask us of our opinion, mumekubali ama mjakubali, and people say, tumekata, ama tumekubali, ama tuna support. That is a way of going around it. Other than us sitting here and then just blaming the whole process, there has been a problem, of course, around that because we do not have a standing law around public participation because even the courts have actually really, really mixed us up. In one instance, you will see a ruling that is quantitative, that this particular public participation should have been quantitative. Then in another one, they are talking about it having been qualitative. So that mixture, I think, again, we will go back to parliament and there is need for parliament to also bring this particular debate to best and ensure that we have got a law. That it, not that it's easy, it's quite difficult to actually quantify and work around this public participation. So it's a whole basket of very many things. But as it were, I would say that uh, it's worked for us for the last 10 years. We can only better it. When you talk of a document that has 5,000 pages or even more, the truth is very few people will be able to read it. But yeah. people will pick up what they think affects their lives. Yes. And the reason why taxation is at the center of our discussion is because people in their own ways correlate what they consider with the taxes they pay and the services they get from these taxes. Now, if they perceive that there is an, an unequalization in this process, that somehow 
the taxes aren't working for them, if I may put it simply, then everything else that we're going to discuss about the finance bill will not really make sense. Because at the end of the day, what do people want from their government? City, if we are going to look at the finance bill from a perspective, and this one is quite a difficult one, a qualitative argument about uh, the people feel like they are not being served sufficiently. Yes. The truth is that whereas that is a so, justified it, conversation. It's not even feel. No. No, you said feel. Now you've read it. Yes, so yes, I'll, go, yes. I'll go with the first line I'm and then I'll come back I'm to I'm responding it. to you. So yes. if we go along that way, we're actually going to have a zero-sum argument and we will not move on because the budget-making process goes on. So with the feeling and the knowing, how then are you doing it differently to move forward? Let's look at the substance of this particular bill, for example. We, we've said about uh, uh, banking services, for example, uh, will no longer be uh, VAT exempt. Uh, what informs this is that a lot of this has actually moved to online. I don't know when last you used your checkbook. I don't know when last you last queued. Uh, you are a very rich man then. A person doing checkbooks is quite rich. But then the rest of us are just doing it online. So it's actually been simplified. So we are looking at how then does that work around that. It's no longer as heavy as it was. In some, some of these services are becoming obsolete. He's raised the issue of bread, for example. What Okango has refused to do, either he has refused to read the finance bill, or he has chosen to spin deliberately. What are we saying? That the supply of bread will stop being zero-rated because what has been happening is that for, me, for bread and milk, the producers have actually been getting refunds from government. So we are doing away with that because when we look at it effectively, we realize that it is catering for a small portion and then there is the rest of us. So there are needs and then we are talking. So we are coming up with a policy on uh, tax, right? Well, people get refunds from government. Yes. Really? Yes. Just start producing milk and you will actually find. The problem is that you are writing checks and you are speaking English here. If you did milk, if you did bread, you will get and that's why we are saying... And the people who rece actually receive this money. <laughs> they receive. And ah. that is why government's highest expenditure has been, when we talk about tax expenditure, has been on milk and bread. And we feel that at a time when we need money to take <coughs> care of more important things like health, <coughs> devolution, paying <coughs> our you debt, know, we cannot be paying Arnold, money outside. Guys, where are you basing this on? Is this, is this what the National Treasury officials have explained? As the reason why they have taken this move? Because this is a proposal that's coming from the National Treasury. Yes. These are actually the footnotes. And I'm actually saying that because I've taken time. Mm. I work for the ruling party. Mm. I've taken time to look at some of those issues that actually people have picked. And it, like City said, it's easy to pick the low-lying fruits and run with them, especially in discussions. But for things, uh, for something as deep as a finance bill, there are a lot of positive stuff in here. And normally when we're doing public participation, so, so, so. we will be invited to talk about what people feel. And so the explanation yeah. here, has it been given in the bill? There are attendant notes, and I have read. I even have some mm -hmm. here. In the mm -hmm. bill. You know, you look at the PBO documents. Look at the parliamentary uh, budget. No, 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 documents. no, no. Finance bill. The bill normally does not have. Okay. Wh when you go so where is bills. this explanation on why we are deciding to do away with the zero rating of bread, manufacturing of bread? Where is the explanation? If you look at the BPA statement, the draft BPA statement, you're going to find a all of these explanations therein. I have even seen members of parliament, and by the way, Latif, allow me to say this. It is so sad that our members of parliament, the people who should actually be articulating this effectively, are coming out and eating their own words and biting their own lips when they should be people who have gone through the BPA statement and come out to explain clearly. Like, for example, the motor vehicle uh, circulation tax. There is a very clear explanation to this in the BPA statement. Which is? Which is so simple that, number one, the cost of keeping vehicles on the road has gone high. Number two, we are going green and we need to actually fund it. Mm -hmm. But what are they coming to tell you here? They are coming to tell you abracadabra and witchcraft. No, no, so no, the no, budget no. policy... So are we going no, to have no, a discussion, no, no, guys? Arnold, so that Arnold, we... Arnold. No, okay. Please. Fred. Yeah, you said no so and you didn't pick up... We're having a discussion, Fred. You want a debate. We will not have a debate here on the back and forth. These guys and these guys. Okay. All right? It's, we, it's get, we are in that discussion. Okay. So you've got uh, to add on to this conversation... On where is the explanation? No, do, you have, do you have an explanation on these proposals in the bill? Where would the explanations be coming from at this point when citizens are looking at this? At this point when the banking sector is, for example, saying, okay, 
this has come up and we do not understand it and it's going to affect us you know when the insurance sector comes up and says these are the issues that are contained in the finance bill this is how they're going to impact on on the sector when the other sectors come up and say this is what's going to impact on us including bread manufacturers is there an explanation being given fred have you come across such explanation eric i'd prefer a debate where you give facts and that is what i came here for so when you tell me you're going to have a discussion and Arnold is explaining what you have not yet seen yourself, then I'm lost. Mm -mm. You don't I'm need lost. to be lost, Fred. The question I've asked is, have you seen it? Is it yes or no? Eric. Have you seen it? Eric, with all due respect, you know, uh, it, it is easy to ask those questions. But you will realize that um, what our listeners want to know and our people want to know is, what is the principle that this government is using to tax them? That's what they want to know. My people don't want to listen to the BPO statement. They don't know it. Actually, it is informed so, by principles oh, and philosophies on, that inform the that's policy. A, that, that's a, that's a discussion. Fred Okango, the question of us is the same question you've repeated. When you have an issue, for example, you've talked about the uh, digital services tax, right? And it's proposed, there are proposals in the finance bill. When you've come across it, have you come across an explanation of it why is this there. is there? Yeah, in, there. The f in the bill, it is not there. Okay. Yes. So that's the question. The, the question, but, but why, see, Eric. Arnold, uh, let, let Fred say what he wishes to say. Fred, speak. You know, mm -hmm. I, I like discussions that are very useful to the people. And the discussions that are useful to the people is, how is this bill going to affect their pocket? That is what we are talking about. These... It, the, the, the the budget making proce uh, uh, process is, is an elaborate one. It is elaborate one. It can't be anything else. And you else summarize really. it to how it only affects the pocket. Wait, 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 wait. How elaborate is Go it? No, no, no. Go on, Fred. Okay. Then please add value. Okay. Go on. Okay. He's asking for a discussion. Uh, uh, He's no, not Arnold, having it. Arnold, Arnold, Fred. Arnold, you know, Fred, Fred is speaking. It's an elaborate process. <laughs> okay. Now, mm, I think. Uh, we need to be a bit serious. We need to be a bit serious because... You know, Fred, you've taken three minutes going around the same issue. Can you uh, execute you your point? Me? <laughs> I want you to execute no, your you point. Are <laughs> because I, don't, I don't feel very comfortable when I'm harassed. No, 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 I'm not harassing right. you. No, you are. I'm just feeling that you're wasting time. I you have seven minutes to go. You are pushing You're going me. around saying the... You have seven minutes to go because you gave Arnold the entire show what my people to talk want about to hear, what things my people that the people are not interested in. So respond right. How do you determine people are not interested because, in this? Because they want to know why is it that UDA is proposing taxes and on the And that is what I'm explaining place? the why. Why and are they proposing to to taxes on the, I have gone on into the, the business of explaining the why. He doesn't want me to talk about the Arnold, why. Arnold. And he's going back to the same thing. Arnold, I'm actually Arnold. interested in the why. Arnold. Yeah. Right? I'm you know, interested in the why as well. It ahead, it, it. It's actually important that you give some someone an opportunity to say what they want to say. Even if they seem to be dragging their feet, let them say it. But is that what your colleague is doing? Uh, they're saying no, you. That I, I am saying speak. So please speak. I strongly believe, City, that the budget making process must be as transparent as possible. You cannot come on this show and tell us there are other footnotes that you need to know. Well, the bill that is before the public is a bill that do not elaborate on those footnotes that you're telling us while well, they are true because i know that process but the, the the manner in which the document comes out does not justify the reasons why they have given to increase the taxes and i've always said that the principle of public participation require that that burden must be equitable you are taxing a segment of the population called the middle class and the low class Based by where you are going to get the money. If you look at the motor vehicle, for example, who own cars in this country? They are not the very low, they are the middle class. But who finances some of those? They are the middle, the, the low class. We are also believing that in expenditure, because they are telling us that the money they have gotten, they are going to ex expend it on building roads. He, he talked of roads here, building I don't know what. But we are saying, is it equitable development? Or is it money that is now going to finance individuals as i've always said 
We have seen proposals to refurbish state house, to buy motor vehicles to the uh, uh, pr what do you call it, uh, deputy president. You know? So that is the issue we have. And the people are very much concerned that where is the money going? And if it is going to a proper use, why more? Why more? Actually, if, if I'm to pick up from what you said, Fred, then perhaps it's incumbent upon the members of parliament and elected leaders to actually understand this finance bill in detail to be able to answer the very questions that you've raised. They don't understand it. That's why some of the UDA members in the last... Do as uh, new MPs understand. You spoke about members of parliament members and he's parliament. rushing, he's rushing the to the Gatanga, UDA categorization. The Does the Azimio leadership and, understand and, and, yes, and they you do. See, okay. this? Yes, the they do. So and French. that's why they have Eric. said French. they are not going to Eric, uh, the vote yes to this bill hold on, hold if on. this bill will not be amended. So what are the issues? The issue with the motor vehicle tax. Right? That's one of them. Okay. The issue with the motor vehicle tax. Back to my question. <coughs> Is there an explanation that has been given or that has been sought yes. to explain why introduce this motor vehicle, so motor vehicle circulation an tax? An explanation from where? From the public or from the treasury? The bill originates from the National Treasury. Yes. Fred, I mean, it goes to your parliament people three times before that. it comes out no, it's publicly. No, about my your people. people, people I'm, the one, I'm the one. So, in Eric, allow me kindly. No, no, no. Let me, let me, let me first of all hear from Fred. You've been the, hearing the, from him for the, the last The bill has days. come from the National Treasury, mm. right? It has several, certain proposals. It is before Parliament. As citizens are engaging on this particular bill, there should be an attendant explanation on, okay, so we it are proposing there, this Eric. and this it and that. So there. what is the solution to that? It is not there. What is they the must solution provide it. As they go, as the committee goes out to conduct public participation, they, might, uh, they must have all the documents and they must have it in the simplest way possible so that anyone who does not understand the budget making process is taken through and told the reason why we are introducing motor vehicle circulation tax is because part of this money is what you'll use to maintain the roads is what you'll use to do. look at the insurers uh, organizations they've already rejected it why are they rejecting it because maybe they've not been taken through to understand this is why this needs to happen and so if Arnold Eric, comes before here you and come to the us, end of the show i should be allowed to actually respond to this very simply the biggest problem we are having and this goes to where i began uh, uh, i've not finished you you actually are finishing time okay. you've been you have 30 seconds Arnold. Finish. You, the, the problem we've had here has been that we have got this kind of debate of kwenda uko that kwenda uko is not discussion is not debate them versus us is not how you debate a but complex Eric, Eric document. Said you wanted a discussion, like, so I gave you a discussion. I said both a, di a discussion and a debate of Kwenda Uko, them and us cannot hold. But I would like to say this: Can Your we? Thirty seconds are over. Five. Can we? Yeah. You know, you gave him seven hey, minutes. I'm being bullied out. No, you are yes. not. You are given. Time <laughs> no, actually, you are very unfair. You are very unfair. You are being bullied out. I, I, you called like us here this. to discuss Number this, one, and you don't uh, want to discuss. We called you to discuss. Eric. You guys brought here Nazimir versus no. Kenneth in the debate. But why did Eric. you pick on Nazimir? Why did you pick on Nazimir? And 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 this is not that kind of show where we have, you know, I wanted, I had 30 bits. No, 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 no. I actually had 30 They're all gone. It's about. now 8 a.m. It's news time. Good morning.